Eric Darling here with uh, my second take recording this video. Uh, I, I, hit, I hit a new professional low where I actually recorded about half of it and then uh, somehow ended up hitting the stop record button and uh, didn't realize it and just kept talking. And then when I was done, I went to, went to hit stop record and I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's fun. So anyway, uh, in this video, we are going to get back into talking about store procedures. Now, I talked about transactions uh, a, a couple of times, a couple of ways, but uh, one, one of them in this series, another one was just sort of a funny short video about someone saying, while, trend, while add at trend count is greater than zero rollback, which is just amusing to me. Uh, I have gotten some uh, f feedback that people would want to know exactly uh, how nested transactions work and how you might be able to actually get a nested transaction to, to nest because SQL Server behaves a lot differently than a lot of other database engines uh, when it comes to nesting transactions. Um, I think the probably the prime example is Oracle, which does allow for partial commits in nested transactions where SQL Server, um, well, you get, y'all don't get rolled back. Um, when you roll back the transaction. Um, we are not going to talk about save points because screw that. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's about it there. Anyway, uh, if you would like to uh, support this channel, um, if, if, you, if you sign up for a million dollars, I'll talk about save points. If you, barring that, not getting into it. Uh, you can use the video, the link in the video description to become a paying member of the channel. Uh, for as few as $4 a month, you too can support a starving SQL Server consultant. Uh, then maybe I can stop answering questions about why my face looks skinny lately. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if, you like, uh, if you like the channel, but maybe not enough to put a ring on it, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, and you can ask me questions privately that I will answer publicly here on my Office Hours episodes. Um, there, It is not a podcast, most vociferously not a podcast. Uh, if you need help with SQL Server, I am, they don't call me Eric Reasonable Rates Darling for nothing. Uh, my rates are reasonable and I am, again, editorially presented with, by Beer Gut Magazine with being the best SQL Server consultant in the world outside of New Zealand. So. I don't see what I don't really see what you have to lose there. Uh, if you need SQL Server training and you don't want to pay like two grand, you can get all mine for about 150 bucks. It's about 24 hours of content, uh, beginner, intermediate, and expert, maybe even some beyond expert stuff, and, uh, and, and and you get that for life. You do not have to subscribe to that. You just sign up and you're in. It's just that's it. You're, you're officially a, a dues-paying member, and we you're allowed in the clubhouse whenever you'd like. Uh, SQL Saturday, New York City 2025 is taking place on May the 10th with a performance pre-con by Andreas Walter on May the 9th. You are cordially invited to both, and you are also cordially invited to bring me gifts. Uh, you can bring me presents, uh, preferably in the form of uh, low value currency so no no hundreds and fifties just stuff that's easy to spend at the bodega so keep that in mind uh, but with that out of the way let's talk about nested transactions now sql server does have the concept of autonomous transactions now uh, i had that window open already good for me uh, now you might look at the date on this blog post and you might think golly and gosh that's old there must be a better way guess what it's not you still have to do all this stuff. Now, this is from back when SQL Server, rather when Microsoft used to have good SQL Server blogs. If you've read a SQL Server blog post lately, um, you you might notice that they're they're not, they're not they're not good. Um, and they they used to back way in the way back when. Look at this back in back to 2006. What were you doing in 2006? What was I doing in 2006? Being young, having fun. No life worth living and all that stuff. Uh, but SQL, Microsoft used to have good SQL Server bloggers. So I would suggest reading this content before Microsoft makes it disappear because one thing Microsoft is famous for is making good stuff disappear and replacing it with crap. 
so please, you know, um, you know, support your local internet archive or something because this stuff ain't forever anymore. Uh, but this post walks through uh, the concept of autonomous transactions, how to make them work with by using a loopback linked server. If you come down here, you'll see uh, some of this stuff. That is a really aggressive use statement up there. I don't know if I agree with that, but uh, you'll see where they create a loop uh, linked server called loopback that just connects to your server, right? Which is add at server name and then uh, you got to do some stuff and then you can get uh, transactions that do partially commit doing that. You can't do it really any other way unless you want to write absolutely bonkers stuff using table variables and save points and other things where um, I'm like, it's, it's, it's so obtuse and edge casey that I, I, I don't want to write that code because I feel like I would get something wrong with it. And one of like three people in the world who would know when that code is wrong would make fun of me. So we're not going to do that. So I will hopefully remember to put that in the video description or get yelled at either way. But the way that a lot, a lot of people think nested transactions work because like when you look at nested transactions, you, it makes sense for them to work like this, but they don't. And it's, this does work in other databases like Oracle. I think there's even a mention of that in the Microsoft post. At least I saw the word Oracle and there weren't like, devil horns on it. So I assume they said something okay about it. But the way that you would expect it to work is like begin a tra transaction called T1, do some stuff, begin a tra transaction called T2, do some more stuff, commit transaction T2 and just have this be like out of the picture, right? Like you saved your changes from this, you're done. And then roll back. And then like, if you wanted to roll back T1, T2 would be left alone, but that doesn't happen. SQL Server does not do this. SQL Server rolls back everything. There are no partial commits, right? At least none that stick around and survive a rollback. So the way that I want to show you that, like that concept in SQL Server is I'm going to create a simple table and a simple store procedure. And this store procedure is just going to do, uh, well, I mean, I guess essentially three things. It's going to begin a transaction and commit a transaction. And in between that, it's going to do two inserts into uh, this table just based off whatever values I pass in and then just to not get a primary key violation, I'm going to add one there. Uh, outside of the store procedure, uh, I'm going to hopefully remember to uh, begin a transaction called T2, run the store procedure, so run a select to show you what values ended up in there, then roll back T2 and show you what values are in the table afterwards. So if we do this, and we run this, we get exactly, we get like a query demo proving exactly what I just told you. Well, well, T2 is an open transaction. We can see these two rows have committed to the transaction table. We have both rows that the store procedure inserted in there and, and committed, right? Like this thing did begin transaction commit. We didn't stop at all this, like the entire procedure executed. And then later, when we rolled back transaction T2, that, that undid trend, the T1 transaction inside of the procedure. So you can't do that. Like I said, you can get some of, you can get some of the aspects of an autonomous transaction if you use table variables and write really complex code. Uh, I don't recommend it. Um, you will spend more time dealing with weird issues than you will be happy that you wrote it. So um, maybe don't do that. Like save yourself some pain. Um, you know, like if you if you want to get autonomous transaction behavior in SQL Server with as little pain as possible, and I say as little pain as possible because you're still dealing with linked servers, and that's absolutely no fun. Uh, then the loopback, then the the the, the instructions in the post that'll be remember in the video description will walk you through that and how to do that. So that is the least painful way, at least that I've come across. Um, I've seen various people try to get the other, the autonomous transaction thing working with table variables and save points and all this other stuff, but um, I've never seen a happy person try to do that. So uh, I want you to be happy out there. I want, I want you to be happy, bright, sunshiny people who um, have great weekends and don't try to do overly ambitious, borderline stupid things with their databases because we all know how that ends up. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something and I will see you in uh, a, a, another video 
another time, another place, another you, another me. It'll be beautiful, though. Well, hopefully we'll remember each other. Anyway, thank you for watching.